Hi. This is a book haul. Hi everyone, it's Mackenzie here and today I'm going to do a book haul. I have with me here a stack of 10 books. Technically I bought these back in April, but we're just gonna pretend like that's not a thing because I never got to haul them and I really want to because I'm actually super excited about all of these books and I want to share them with you all. So I'm just going to film a haul now. I don't know too much about some of these. They just looked really exciting when I found them on Goodreads. So I will be keeping the details probably to a bit of a minimum, but just know that I'm very excited about all of these. Otherwise I wouldn't have spent my money on them. All right, I changed my mind because it was very echoey in the kitchen. So my phone is literally just like balanced on, um, the edge of my mantle, but it's not even like an edge. I don't know. If it falls, it falls. Sorry. All right, the first book I have today is the only one that I've already read. <laughs> Twas the Night Shift Before Christmas by Adam Kay. This is nonfiction. Um, it's very short. It's like less than 200 pages. Yeah, it's like 141 pages. I think it might be the shortest book that I own. Um, and this is quite possibly my new favorite nonfiction book, Adam Kay is um, a doctor, I don't know, it, it's in the UK and I'm not entirely sure how their medical system works. Cause like here we have like doctors and nurses and um, different types of hospitals and wards. And I don't know all the specifics in America. I definitely don't know all of the specifics in the UK, but he is basically a doctor <laughs> um, at a hospital. I think he works in sort of an ER kind of place or like he talks a lot about the gynecology ward. So I'm not entirely sure what he does, but he works with a lot of different patients. And he was stuck working the night shift on Christmas and Thanksgiving and whatever boxing day is because everyone talks about it, but I don't know what it is. But basically Adam K has been stuck working those awful holiday shifts for several years in a row now. And so he wrote a book about um, some of the funniest or craziest stories that he has from working those shits. This is actually Adam Kay's second book, which I think I knew on some level when I bought it, but didn't actually think about too hard. And considering how much I loved this, I definitely want to pick up his other books. So look out for that in the future. The second book I have for you today is I Know You Know Who I Am by Peter Kispert. Honestly, this is the one I know the absolute least about. I just know it's a book of short stories. It is a short story collection, anthology, um, and I, I don't really know what the overarching theme is. I guess I could read the back, but I don't know. Um, this is a debut, so I'm excited. I think some of these are debuts. I'm not sure how many though, but um, I really don't know anything about this. I think it's queer in some capacity because I'm pretty sure I found this through a recommendation on Cece's channel over at her, <laughs> whatever her YouTube handle is. I don't remember. Sorry, I'll put it right there so you can go also watch her videos because they're great. Um, but this I'm almost positive was recommended by her. So that's why I bought it. The third book I have for you is Wranglestone by Darren Charlton. I forgot his name. Um, this is a zombie book. <laughs> this takes place on an island where these people are sort of in hiding from all of the, as they call, restless dead, which live out on the mainland. But when it gets cold in the winter, the big lake surrounding their island freezes over. So now there's nothing stopping the zombies from just walking across the ice to get to their island. So I think it's sort of a um, battle where they're like protecting themselves, but there's also a relationship in it. I don't know, it looked really fun. And I don't read a lot of zombie books because I feel like they always follow the same format, but I'm trying to get more into um, traditional monsters like I want I always like stick my nose up at vampire and werewolf and ghost books because I'm like those, those are for children but I some of them are good so I kind of want to get more into that so I figured this was a good jumping off point the next book I have I think it's the fourth is The Afflictions by Vikram Parlkar I have no clue if I'm pronouncing that correctly so if I'm not I'm really sorry please feel free to correct me down in the comments but um 
I mostly just bought this because look at this cover. Can you see that? I don't know if the light is in the way. Holy crap, you guys. Oh my God. I think when I bought this, I thought it was more of a story, but it's now that I own it, it's less of a story, at least how it looks to me anyway, and more of just a straight up encyclopedia of different like dramatized diseases. If that makes any sense here, like an example. Um, the exclusive encyclopedia of medicine. It's a dizzying collection of maladies. An amnesia that causes everyone you've ever met to forget you exist while you remain perfectly painfully aware of your history. A wound that grows with each dark thought or evil deed you commit, but shrinks with every act of kindness. A disease that causes your body to imitate death, stopping your heart, cooling your blood. Will the fit pass before they bury you? or after. Overall, I don't even care if there's a story in it. This book just sounds so unbelievably cool and I am in love with this cover. It's so creepy. I love it. The fifth book that I have today is After Me Comes the Flood by Sarah Perry. Technically, I've started reading this. I haven't gotten very far. I'm only on page 36. We follow a man named John Cole. Um, he's in his bookshop and it's like super hot outside. Um, whatever UK city he lives in is experiencing like this massive heat wave drought sort of thing. Um, and so like everyone has kind of left the city and he's like, okay, I've stayed as long as I can, but I can't take it anymore. I'm going to pack up for a few days or a few weeks, who knows. And I'm going to go out and visit my brother because he has a house somewhere in the country. So he packs up, he starts driving and on the road, his car overheats and breaks down. And so he needs water to fix it so he can keep driving. He spots this house on the side of the road. So he walks up to it, he opens the door and they say, oh, John Cole, you're finally here. We've been expecting you. And he's like, how do you know who I am? So far in the book, he's kind of just been going along with it. So I'm not entirely sure like, what it is. I thought that it was magical realism, but I'm actually not sure about that anymore. It might just be kind of a very um, creepy thriller. I'm not entirely positive, but it's pretty, it's very atmospheric so far. So that's cool. We're halfway through you guys. The sixth book I have is Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy. This is the same author of Dumplin' and Puddin', neither of which I've read, but I've heard that they're good. <laughs> neither of which interest me either like if I'm ever going to experience that story I think I'll just watch the movie on Netflix but this book actually looked very interesting it's much longer than I anticipated <laughs> I got this for like four dollars and so when it came and it was this thick I was like I wasn't expecting that <laughs> this is a coming-of-age story it follows a girl named Ramona who is six feet tall and has blue hair. And if that's not enough to sell you on this book, I'm not really sure what is. She knows she likes girls, but over the summer, um, an old friend from her childhood comes back into town. And so she gets reacquainted with him. And the more that they hang out together, the more she develops feelings. And she thinks, wait a minute, I thought I liked girls. What does this mean? So this sounds to me like bisexual rep and I'm excited for that. The next book I have is The Good Demon by Jimmy Koholias. Koholias? I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. In this book, we follow Claire, who has a demon inside of her. And so everyone around her is like, ah, oh, you have a demon in you. And so they try to very eloquently put Mackenzie, wow. She has a demon inside of her. And so everyone around her, her friends, her family, everyone in the town, is trying to have an exorcism to get rid of the demon. And I think they do and it works, but what they don't know is that Claire is actually friends with her demon. And so she is very upset that they got rid of the demon. And so now she's going to somehow get the demon back. I don't, rem I don't remember if it said how, but I know she's going to go on um, some sort of adventure or quest or inner soul searching to get her demon back because they were friends. <laughs> I don't know, this just sounded really wacky. Um, I love, I don't love exorcisms. I don't know why I, I was about to say that, but I love um, religious um, intimidation stories. And so a girl trying to reverse her own exorcism sounds really cool to me. 
The next book I have is called Layover Land by Gabby Noon. I'm pretty sure this is a YA romance, but it has very heavy, um, I guess, magical realism elements, although not necessarily like realism because, well, you'll see why when I explain. In this book, we follow a girl named B, and on her last day on Earth, she um, ruined the life of her little sister and then died in a fatal car accident. So she thinks that she deserves to go straight to hell because of what she did. Then um, when she sort of wakes up from that fatal car accident, she finds herself on a plane which lands in an airport that somebody tells her is purgatory. So she is in um, purgatory and in order to get to heaven, she has to help 500? 50? 5,000? What was the number? She has to help 5,000 souls figure out what's keeping them from moving on, and only then can she go to heaven. The problem is, the very first person that she has to help is a boy named Caleb, who coincidentally is the boy who caused her fatal car accident, and she does not want to help him get to heaven, you know? So I think they just sort of have to begrudgingly work together so that they can both move on to where they want to go. I don't know, this book, just the idea of purgatory being an airport just like really stuck out to me and so I am super excited to figure out what this is all about and what it has in store for me. The next book I have is On Swift Horses by Shannon Puffall. The synopsis is a bit confusing because there's a lot going on. In this book, we follow a woman named Muriel. She's newly divorced and not very happy within her marriage. She misses her dead mom. She misses her brother-in-law, Julius. And so um, she works at a casino in Kansas. And over time, because she's so unhappy with her life, she starts gambling and taking risks on horse racing and betting on that. Meanwhile, over in Las Vegas, Julius, her brother-in-law, is um, just trying his hand at all the slot machines and casinos out there. And while he's there, he falls in love with someone named Henry. But pretty soon, some bad luck befalls Henry. And so Julius goes on this cross country, I don't know if it's cross country, but he goes somewhere to search for Henry and try to find him. I like the fact that it's dual narrative. I like the fact that there's gambling and betting. It. I feel like it's going to give me kind of um, Pretty Things by Janelle Brown vibes, but I don't know for sure. It just sounds like there's a lot going on in this book. And the last book I have for this haul is Kingdom Tide by Rye Curtis. This book has deckled edges and I'm kind of living for it. When a plane crashes in the unforgiving wilderness of Montana, Cloris Waldrop <laughs> is the only survivor. She's an old woman. I forget how old, it doesn't say, but no, yes, 72 year old Cloris Waldrop is the only survivor of that plane crash. And so she is um, trying to find her way out of this big wilderness of Montana. And she's surviving, she's exploring. Meanwhile, a park ranger, a young park ranger, Ranger Lewis, is tasked with trying to find her. And so it basically seems like these two women are just going to, you can see the faces right there, are going to try to... Um, <laughs> navigate the dangerous terrain of this forest together to locate each other and get out safely. I don't know, it just sounded, um, I'm not a huge fan of survival stories, so I'm gonna be honest, not entirely sure why I picked this up. However, I'm pretty sure the reason I did, like subconsciously, is because I wanted to see a 72 year old woman survive in the wilderness. Like, I just, I just wanted it for Cloris, honestly. Who cares about Ranger Lewis? I just wanted to see Cloris surviving out in Montana by herself after a plane crash. So this is the last book. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I'm sorry if the sound quality is a little off. I'm not sure if it's still echoey when I'm in my living room. Um, and I don't know if the fan was on for part of the video. So if that was distracting, sorry about that as well. I turned it off as soon as I noticed. Anyway, I really enjoyed doing this haul. Let me know if you guys enjoy watching hauls. 
because I buy a lot of books. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Oh, I have to take a thumbnail? Good lord. This book is so smooth that every time I stack anything on top of it, everything just slides right off the pile. Peace out. <laughs>